Mothers come in many different forms, and today we celebrate them all. We have all mothers, and it is an overwhelming responsibility being one. There's no manual or guidebook. Little wonder we make mistakes. Happy Mother's Day to all mothers, those present and those who have passed. The prayer we have just listened to reminds me of prayers I have frequently uttered and continue to utter as a mother. Please care and guide our precious sons as they face each challenge, be it a school exam, sporting event, musical contest, in fact, all of life's challenges. The last advice is important. Jesus knew he was leaving his friends and he needed to prepare them and the believers in the future, such as us. The central concern of the prayer is oneness or unity, oneness with God, oneness with others. John uses imagery that Jesus was God's envoy and ambassador. His life and ministry is to be seen as an offer of relationship, a hand outstretched from God. This relationship is not any kind of relationship. It is one characterized by love, God's unconditional love. When this prayer was written, there was a split in the community of followers. Christian Jews no longer used the synagogues. They were establishing their own faith groups. Jesus is praying that the community will hold together, that they will live from the unity, and that they celebrate in his life and his relationship with God. They failed, and that failure repeats itself when Christians write each other off. When love den denigrates, sorry, den degenerates into apathy or worse, hate. The Christian church's journey through the millennia is littered with examples of this hate and apathy, the Crusades being one such example. Unity is not an extra it is the essence of what it means to be Christian. The focus on unity assumes inclusiveness, in which no one and nothing is left out. Unity does not translate as conformity. We are not required to be the same as each other. Our difference is to be celebrated. Unity with integrity does require that we can articulate not only what we affirm together, but what we do not affirm. Our events manager and fellow parishioner, Gino Cineros, his partner, Michael, and his supporters have this last week been in the media. Gino took Bishop Ross, Bishop of Auckland Diocese, to the Human Rights Tribunal on the grounds of discrimination due to his sexual orientation. Gino had studied since 2006 and completed his Bachelor of Theology in anticipation of being discerned for the priesthood. Gino and I studied together. Several decades ago, I would have been in a similar position as Gino, but the church changed the rules regarding the ordination of women, and I was not denied the discernment process due to my gender and after training, I was ordained as a vocational deacon in 2010. The church over the centuries has been guilty of not walking this path of being one, in complete contradiction of the Gospels. The church has used scripture to support exclusion. Slavery was once condoned and supported by scripture, the first slave freed by a court of law was in England in 1722. It was not until 1833 that the Abolition of Slavery Act was passed in the United Kingdom. However, there are still estimated to be 27 million children, 
men and women to be slaves today worldwide. The Anglican Church in Aotearoa, New Zealand and Polynesia first ordained women in 1977. Penny Jameson was ordained Bishop of Dunedin in 1989. There are still parts of the Anglican Communion that prohibit women from the priesthood, the Diocese of Sydney being that one very close to home. The Church of England last year voted that women could not be bishops. According to the Vicar of Dibley, it was the Dibley's parish's fault, with her parish council vote being, no, 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 yes, yes, yes. And that counted for the ignominious result. Women have fought a long and exhausting battle to be deigned in our church, and in many parts of the Anglican Communion and in other denominations, this battle continues. One of my favourite films is Chocolat. Bian, the main character, arrives in a small French village with a daughter, no husband. She opens a chocolate shop during Lent. She quietly challenges the religious establishment's power over the people by the generously hospitable way in which she lives and by her welcoming of outcasts. Pierre Henri, the young priest, in his Easter sermon, challenged the establishment by talking of Jesus' humanity, how he had lived on his life on earth, his kindness, his tolerance. He continued to say, we must measure our goodness not by what we don't do, what we deny ourselves, what we resist or who we exclude, Instead, we should measure ourselves by what we embrace, what we create, and who we include. Bian changed that village with her difference and her sense of unity with everyone, and by doing, a community of inclusion resulted. We separate ourselves from each other according to theology. We separate ourselves from each other according to race. We separate ourselves from each other according to social class. We separate ourselves from each other according to geography. We separate ourselves from each other according to gender, sexual orientation, appearance, age, politics. The list goes on and on. With so much out there that divides us, how are we ever likely to achieve the kind of unity that Jesus requests of us? I think it helps to understand that the unity for which Jesus asks is not based on who we are, but on what God is. The unity for which Jesus prays is not dependent on our ability to overcome division, but God's constant love for us in spite of it. There is a we of faith precisely because of the way in which God relates to each and every one of us, not because of the way in which we relate to each other. Jesus was not praying for a monolithic expression of faith in which all believers believe the same things without variance. The unity here is not the absence of disagreements, it is loving others in spite of them. Wherever there is division, discord, disunity, the all-encompassing love of God is forever wearing away the walls that separate us. We have allowed women to be ordained. We are challenging our church to allow gay men and women with partners to be ordained. We can celebrate our uniqueness and be grateful for our difference. But at the same time, we must never lose sight of the fact that all of us, to paraphrase Paul in Galatians, slave and free, 
female and male, old and young, rich and poor, educated and uneducated, healthy and ill, are made one in Christ, and that unity is greater than anything that distinguishes us. Jesus was not asking for foundational cognitive unity as much as he was asking for a relational one. The prayer is about relationship with God and one another rather than getting everyone to agree with us. Glory shines through when the church is humble, doing quiet things to serve others, those who are outsiders. Like Vian, creating community with love and respect with difference. Amen.